Inside Story. for digesting in front of you. But as soon as you take a bite of food, even before you swallow, you start digesting. The first part of digestion is breaking down the food and mixing it up with saliva. That's what teeth do. Different kinds of teeth break down different kinds of food. David will show you what I mean. Hmm. Different animals have different teeth, and different teeth do different jobs. We can see just how different teeth can be by looking at the skulls of some dead animals. This is a coyote. See the rows of sharp pointed teeth? They're for cutting and tearing food. These front teeth, these long and sharp ones, they're called canines. The jaw works like this, up and down. This is the skull of a beaver. A beaver uses his teeth to chew wood and make dams. The front teeth, the incisors, are long and sharp and orange. The beaver grinds its food like this. And this is the skull of a horse. Horses eat mostly grass, and grass is very tough. So, horses have big, flat, wide teeth for grinding and shredding. See this hole here? Horses don't have any canines like animals that eat meat do. Like the lion. And this is the skull of a lion. Look at this. The front teeth are like fangs for catching food, not chewing it. The teeth on the side, though, are for chewing, for cutting and tearing. See how they overlap? They work like scissors, like this. And this is a human skull. Now, we eat all different kinds of food, so we have different kinds of teeth. Incisors, sharp for cutting, like a knife. Canine, pointed for tearing, like a fork. Bicuspids, for crushing and cracking, like a nutcracker. And molars, for grinding and mashing. Different teeth for different jobs. After food is broken down by the teeth, it goes to the stomach, where chemicals break it down even further. Different chemicals break down different foods. Now, say this is your stomach. First, I'm going to pour in some water. There is always some water in your stomach. Water is one of the chemicals that helps your stomach digest food. And now, I'll lower our sugar cube into the water. Sugar dissolves very easily in water. See? Goodbye, candy. And now, I'll try to dissolve this piece of potato.
nothing happens. That's because starch, which is what a potato is made of, doesn't dissolve in just water. It takes a chemical produced by your digestive system, an enzyme. So, I add this enzyme. And goodbye, French fry. Great. Now let's try some protein, like meat. But first, I'm going to put some gloves on. We're going to have to add another enzyme and some acid. The enzyme and acid are dissolving the meat. By the way, the food doesn't just sit here during all this. The stomach churns and moves around and sometimes makes a lot of gurgling noises. And of course, digestion doesn't happen quite this fast in your body. Ta-da! And that's basically how your stomach dissolves different kinds of food with different kinds of chemicals or enzymes. The stomach isn't the only organ that digests food. There is a whole digestive system working to break down your food even more. Then it can be absorbed into your body. Cut it open. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Ron Roshan is a scientist who studies animals. This is the digestive tract of the pig. All right? Now, the reason we're going to use the digestive tract of the pig because it's very similar to our own digestive tract, all right? And what we want to do is just illustrate uh, what's happening to our food as it breaks down and we get vitamins and nutrients from it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So what we're going to do first is just go through the whole tract, just get an idea of what is what, okay? okay. All right. Uh, this right here is the esophagus, okay? All right, just like our throat, okay? The, the pig chews his food really well and mixes up real good. And as he starts to swallow his food, muscular contractions allow the food to work down the esophagus. And from the esophagus, like we just said, the food goes directly into the stomach. Right here, this whole entire structure, this bad-like structure. Touch it right quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How's it feel? No way? Oh, you want to touch it? Okay, all right. It's like jello. Yeah. Yes. The stomach feels like a spongy type of structure, doesn't it? Yeah. Very, yeah. very yeah. strong, yeah. So it's a bag-like structure, which is important because um, it stores all our food and mixes it really well. And one very interesting part about the stomach is that most people think that digestion takes place right here at the stomach. And this is not necessarily true. Some digestion takes place, but the main digestion takes place later on in the tract, which we'll get to a little bit later. So the stomach starts right here then, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, food goes in from the esophagus, like we said yeah, at the beginning, okay? okay? And it works all the way down around, all right, till it gets to this part right here. Which, which is? Which is the pylorus area, okay? And this right here is very important because this area actually controls the release of food going into the small intestine. So uh, if you didn't have this piece, the food would just go straight from the stomach? Just, yeah, and we need this area. Mm -hmm. We need this, this important structure so that our food can be released in a systematic way, all right? And so we go from the pyloric region... And here we have the pancreas, the pancreas area. This small part. Beautiful, right here. Yeah. All of this is pancreatic region. Okay. What, what does the pancreas do? Okay, pancreas will provide important enzymes and juices which will enable the breakdown of the food that the pig eats. Right here we have the gallbladder. And from the gallbladder we get bile, okay? Digestive juices which enter from this point into the small intestine, which are necessary for the breakdown of the food that the pig is eating. So we, we're receiving... Juices that are coming from the gallbladder, and also juices that are coming from the pancreas. Do the juices from the pancreas and the gallbladder mix together and go into the small intestines? Exactly. Um, the juices go directly into the small intestines, and that will enable the breakdown of those large particles, those large food particles, into smaller food particles, so that absorption can take place. And we can, you know, get nutrients and vitamins and things like that from the food that we eat. How long does this food stay in the small intestine? 
Well, food can stay in the small intestine anywhere from a 8 to 12 hour period. How long does it stay in the human small intestine? Very good question. Even though we eat different things than pigs eat, the food in our small intestines will stay in there approximately the same amount of time, anywhere from 8 to 12 hours. So the most important part of the digestive tract is the small intestine. It's here that the nutrients which are needed are absorbed through the small intestine into the body. What happens when the food leaves the small intestine? Well, whatever food does, isn't digested by the small intestine will then enter into the large intestine. Mm -hmm. It's this part right here? Yeah, this entire region right here is the large intestine. And what takes place around this area is that water absorption will take place through the large intestine back into the pig's body. And this will enable the drying processes of the, the food material that wasn't digested to enter into the rectal area of the pig, all right? This is where the feces are located, right in the rectum area, and after everything's ready, to be excreted. How much time does the whole process take, from eating to the excretion of the feces? The whole process could take anywhere from a day to a day and a half. Just like a human? Yeah, the digestive process is taking place just like it does in a human being. What does the stomach look like inside? Inside? Well, let's cut open and find out, okay? <clears throat> okay. Oh. Yeah, and Look at that. Pretty interesting, huh? Okay, so this is the inside of the stomach. Everybody wanted to know how it looked inside. And look what we have. We have some undigested food, which hasn't started to move down the small intestines yet. Is it yellow because the pig eats a lot of grass? No, well, the pig, you, this pig was on a, a corn diet. What does it look like inside the small intestine? Let's open up the small intestines and find out. And here we go. It looks much more broken down. It yeah. looks much less coarse than the other one did. Yeah, you notice that, everybody? Everybody notice that? You see how? Yeah. You see how the, the food particles are being broken down now? The difference in context between here and here? Yeah. So we know that the nutrients are being absorbed through the small intestine into the animal's body. Everybody want to see the gallbladder? Yeah. Contents. Okay. Well, what we'll do? Let's cut right around the the duct area. Like so, okay? And then if we squeeze, we can see juices coming out, see? Yes. Those are the digestive juices. Yeah. It's the bile coming out. They go into the small intestine. And then help with the digestion. Yeah, helps break down the fat. So here we go, guys. This is the entire digestive tract right here. Many organs working together in a systematic way so that the animal can digest food and, and get the proper nutrients which are needed for survival. Well, I may not be working very hard, but my digestive system is. Just like the insides of a pig, the insides of you and me are constantly taking food and breaking it down. This means work for our teeth, a bunch of different chemicals, and the rest of our digestive system. Bon digestion. Three to One Classroom Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.